What in the monkey doo doo is happening in Mythic Plus this week? That's the question we have for today on this Saturday because we are at this point about halfway through this uh, second week, I guess, of 10.2.6 and uh, the situation in Mythic Plus is, to say the least, uh, very weird. I guess, I guess we can start with the conclusion first and then go and ask ourselves what's happening. The conclusion probably is that um, there has been Plunderstorm available in 10.2.6, Blizzard also launched the meta achievement able to be collected in 10.2.6 and then other things like, for example, the PTR of Diablo 4 Season 4 has gone live, you have Path of Exile that just launched today, for example. There is a couple of other games like Dragon's Dogma 2 being released as well. So perhaps this combination has caused the absolute weirdery that we are seeing now in Mythic Plus. This was the situation up to last week in Mythic Plus, by the way, something that we have we have got the news to see over the weeks with Retribution Paladin having a gap compared to the rest and also the Havoc Demon Hunter losing out over time yeah, compared to their olden days, nowadays they dropped lower and lower and lower, this is something we have monitored before. This week we have gotten some, some slight changes, for starters Red Paladin is not nearly as much of a chad as before, now Demonology and Outlaw are much closer to each other, but what is more striking, which is also what might cause the absolute randomness we are about to see, is the number of runs, at the very least for now. We have been keeping track of the number of runs every week in this uh, season, unlike the previous couple of seasons where it was stopped much earlier on, and it was more or less somewhat stable in the past month or so, it dropped by a bit, but it was, you know, slightly below the 1 million runs, which is as absurd as it sounds, it was actually at the same level of just a month and a half inside of Season 2. That's how weirdly disastrous Season 2 was. But what is to notice is the amount of runs, for example, of just a few weeks ago, just this is just a month ago basically, this one right here, you can see the top runs being able to almost reach the cap that, that is collected on mythicstats.io which is 8000 runs, right, you see that there is 8k, 8k and then a bunch in the middle, you know the average was about 7000 run in week 16, in week 17 it was almost the same, in fact it was slightly higher perhaps, then you have week 18 where you only have one spec being able to cap the amount of runs and shadow priest getting close but the others were starting to drop and then you have last week the week of the release of plunderstorm where there was only one and then only one barely above 7000 and the others were far lower down and then this week so yes technically speaking we are on saturday we still we still have today and sunday and monday and tuesday we have roughly about half of the week left but even if you were to double the amount of runs this week, the numbers are extremely low, or at the very least, extremely low for the top, right? You have an Arms Warrior and a Windwalker Monk being played, similarly to something like a Frost Mage, a Balanced Druid, an Huntsman Shaman, and the number itself is very, very low. So with lower numbers, you have... Uh, you have more room for things to change wildly. For example, we had been talking about Shadow Priest being being significantly improved over the weeks, right? Doing quite well. And then now there is a random survival hunter and even an arms warrior getting in the top six of the performance of Mythic Plus. You can better see the weirdness of this week in the timeline. You can see the absolute nosedive both Shadow and Fire Mage are taking this week. Balanced Druid as well is falling like a tiny little leaf. Red Paladin also has had a massive drop, similar to the drop of Havok, except Havok has been way more consistent over time. You even have the tanks. Vengeance Demon Hunter players have stopped playing for some reason. Now the performance has dropped significantly. And finally the healers, where there was actually one major change, which was the buff of Holy Priest, right? So the weirdness of this situation is perhaps the reason is what we are seeing right now in the results of the meta. We are seeing things that we haven't seen in a while, like for example the lowest result of Vengeance Demon Hunter in the past three months out of nowhere. Players just suddenly decided they wanted to play Prot Paladin again. Somewhat similar with Resto Shaman. It might be funny or perhaps sad, but this is the highest Resto Shaman has been since about 8 months in terms of representation in Mythic Plus. 
Consequentially, this is also the lowest Resto Druid has been the entire season and also one of the lowest of Discipline Priest because of the sudden growth of Holy Priest in Mythic Plus. We have some similar and quite drastic changes in Mythic Plus for the DPS as well. We were not aware, but now we know that Fire Mages are in a relationship with Vengeance Demon Hunters. I believe they both went on a trip together as they both collapsed completely in play rate this week. This is too suspicious to be just a coincidence. The other specs, technically speaking, did have an even bigger change. For example, for example, as small as it looks like, you have Beast Mastery Hunter going from 1 to 5%. That's literally 5 times as much as, as before. And a few other changes like Shadow Priest getting lower than before, Outlaw dropping a little bit. In all of this, where multiple specs are losing their, their popularity, even Augmentation dropping by half, the only one that continues to grow and reach the new season record of 25% is Red Paladin. Nobody warned them, apparently. They don't play other games. They're not interested in other releases that are going on right now. They're also not busy going out for dinner like the Vengeance and the Fire Mages together. They're just continuing to play Mythic Plus right now. It's understandable. I'm not here to blame Red Paladins. After all, they have been primarily a meme for several expansions in a row. It's not that Red Paladin has been historically a very popular Mythic Plus spec, right? This is Shadowlands. Where is Red? You know, Red is shit. That's what it is. So, you know, for one expansion and particularly one season where they are actually doing fine, then I understand. I understand why they would not want to play like Dragon's Dogma 2 when they can actually be invited to a Mythic Plus key. For at least a few more weeks until eventually season 4 drops and for whatever reason they become a meme again. But for now, they continue to grow in popularity in Mythic Plus. We have our usual tier lists and rankings of Mythic Plus based on the score, basically how, how many, you know, the average of these specs, which average keys are they completing at the very high end. So basically the very high end of a Marksmanship Hunter is doing plus 23 keys, while the very high end of a Shadow Priest is doing 28 keys or 29 keys, right? So that's the clear difference. And we see the slight change of today where Outlaw Rogue is now doing similar damage and being quite close to Red Paladin. In fact, actually, one point above Red Paladin in terms of score. We do also see the slight change in healers, where Resto Shaman is now leapfrogging the other three healer specs and getting, well, saying close is a bit too much to the top three specs of the season because they are still quite quite a bit down compared to the other three healers, but at the very least now they are definitely more played. It's even visible here in the amount of parses. The rest of Shaman's parses are quite competitive, even above the parses of a disciplined priest right now. In case you're getting confused, this is perhaps part of the meta that was helped to be created, we can say, by the MDI tournament, where you start seeing zero healers in the top keys more and more and more. This is uh, explainable, uh, whether it is a Shadow Priest and then no healer, or it is a Balanced Druid and then no healer, or both, or both. The answer is that most of these keys are being done in a couple of different dungeons specifically. These are Ataldazar and Black Crew Cold. Because the first boss of both of these and even the first mega pool of both of these dungeons can be done without a healer, for example, the first mega pool of Ataldazar plus Rezan or even the first boss of Black Crew Cold, which basically both don't even require a healer if you play properly, you do this by starting the key, like for example with JB, Arresto Druid, starting the key as a Balanced Druid, doing a bunch of damage, and then going back out, respecting to Resto and finishing the key. But the start of the key was with a Balanced Druid, and this is what gets reported on Raider IO. The same goes if your healer is a Priest, Discipline Priest, going in as a Shadow at the start of the key. That is what is happening in these type of key levels without a, a healer. As we have checked already a few days ago, the performance of the of the season has been very, very good. We have a bit over 6.2 million recorded keys in season three. As a comparison, in season two, we had <laughs> we had two <laughs> we had 2.4 in Dragonflight season two. Even if we have a comparison with Shadowlands, the season three of Shadowlands, it was 4.2 mil. So this season is going quite well in terms of popularity, just not now, just just not this week with the amount of players who have ditched to do something else, at the very least for this week, maybe even the next week, maybe even until the 
the, the start of season 4. They realize there are better things to do than continue to play Mythic Plus right now. In the terms of the difficulty of the dungeons, at this point we know this already, even after multiple nerfs, Dawn of the Infinites continues to be the hardest of the dungeons. That's not particularly big news nowadays. You also have the compositions of Mythic Plus, which this week, with some more weirdness, continues to have the same similar things we have seen before, like a full vengeance line of tanks, majority of Mistweavers nowadays, compared to weeks ago, right? where it was way more split and even the first entry we have the first entry of holy priest amongst the more popular compositions since uh, well since the entire season really we have never really seen holy priest in here dominance in the dps of red padding which continues as mentioned they have become so popular they have now decided to just double up now you just run two of them at the same time why not and the previously popular spec which has now been almost completely replaced by red was havoc which is now no longer visible in the popular compositions of the week. So with all this taken care of, this is the current situation in Mythic Plus. The last thing worth noticing, just as a reminder, because after all, yes, we got a new patch, but technically speaking, in this patch, we didn't actually get any particular changes. The only one change was the damage increase of Holy Priest. So. That's what has brought them significantly higher than before, even before the dispatch, where Holy Priest's damage was terrible. Now, with the buff in 10.2.6, their damage has become much more comparable. And even the ones who are, you know, playing around with the buffs are able to do even, even significantly more overall burst damage than the other specs right now in Mythic Plus. That's the only one significant change in this, uh, I guess, last part of this season. So... For today, as we already have Season 4 on the PTR, as a matter of fact, right now it's testable. All of the Mythic Plus dungeons of Season 4 are being tested in the PTR of 10.6. We can now close this Mythic Plus recap on this Saturday. Hoping that this weirdness continues, because at least it's gonna make things fun to see some random shit happening, like out of nowhere, suddenly Frost DK or something like Survival become meta again for the next few weeks before the release of Season 4. We can now leave each other for today. We're starting, of course, the goodbyes by thanking all of the Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of the channel, which can, as usual, still be given for free, like liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, with these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow, and in the meantime... Oh man, I hate it. I hate it when I wake up, and I thought I slept well, and I'm ready to begin the new day, and then I realize I actually barely slept four hours. Shit.